good on. So I understand, so I understand from the start that uh, there's been a full start in the opening race of the uh, repechage of the women's single skulls. Uganda, Switzerland to Ukraine to Germany one and Egypt. So uh, they will reform on the start line and we'll let you know uh, once they're underway.
ready. The crews in this uh, repechage of the women's single skulls are already at 800 metres. Just before we hand over to our commentary team, let's just hear from Luca down in the stands. And of course, all these crews this afternoon, Luca, racing for a second time. Uh, have conditions changed much? I can see the flags are quite a flutter there on the clubhouse. Yeah. Yeah, Rob, uh, we're here again and we can't wait uh, to jump on board with all of those athletes competing this afternoon. The conditions are simply the same, I have to say, same as this morning, but uh, the big challenge is for all of these athletes that are going to race for the second time on the same day. Absolutely, and uh, this is a last chance for these crews to get into a potential wedding, uh, medal winning p p position by qualifying for the semi-finals. But they've gone through a thousand metres, which is where our wonderful commentary team of Rosano Galtarossa and Neve Hayes are. And Neve, how are they looking as they come through here? Ukraine too looking good and having just missed out on an automatic semi-final spot this morning. Absolutely, Rob. Yes, it is Diana Serebrinska there leading it out here in the first repechage of the women's single skulls. She's right in the middle there in lane three. Fastest out of these scholars this morning, so it's no surprise that she's leading it out here now. Very close then back between Germany one, we have Alexandra Fuster and over in lane two for Switzerland two, we have Salome Ulrich. Ed eccoci con il primo dei due recuperi di questo pomeriggio per il Singolo femminile, ha transitato ai mille metri l'atleta dell'Ucraina, Diana Sembraica, che conduce sulle prime tre posizioni quelle che poi daranno l'accesso alla semifinale, e mentre le altre atlete andranno in finale C. In questo momento Ucraina, Svizzera e Germania sono le, le singoliste che stanno eh, tenendo testa in questo recupero e stanno cercando di consolidare il passaggio di turno. It's always going to be harder when you have to come back and row a second time on the same day, particularly as it's quite hot. It's looking around 25 degrees out there at the moment, but it is still Diana Serebrinska of Ukraine 2 leading it out ahead of Alexander Fuster of Germany 1. In that third position at the moment, it is still Salome Ulrich. And then we have a little bit back to Ganda Ibrahim of Egypt and Kathleen Noble of Uganda. So there was six uh, single scholars in the women's category straight through into the semi-final AB earlier on this morning. So the first three out of this uh, race will be joining them. Then the remaining two crews will be heading straight to final C. So they have about 450 metres to go here now. Not much changing at all in terms of speed. Alexander Fuster very much starting to put on a little bit of pressure here now on Diana Serbrinska, um, who had a brilliant first half of her her race here now and in fact she's starting to respond here now and has got her speed up here as well keeping a nice steady rate though of 30 so I'm sure she has a little bit in the tank left to make sure she uh, stays in that semi-final position but it's not looking like that those top three positions uh, will be taken from them. Looking like it will be Ukraine to Germany one and Switzerland two going through into that semi final. Thank you very much indeed, Neve. Uh, yes, looking very good for Dana Sebrianska of uh, Ukraine too. And uh, keeping right up alongside her, as you said, is uh, Alexandra Furster. So uh, those two will go through, probably with Salome Ulrich of Switzerland too. The six nations that qualified from the heats this morning, the Netherlands, Norway, Ireland, Ukraine one, Spain and Germany two. E possiamo sentire che in questo momento anche la tifoseria della Svizzera riporta i campanacci in auge, inizia la battaglia, inizia la grande bagarre e se da un lato appunto i colori dell'Ucraina e della Germania cercano di volare via, dall'altro anche il terzo posto è valido per l'accesso in semifinale e c'è la Svizzera che ancora una volta cerca di agganciarsi al gruppo di testa per centrare l'obiettivo e continuare a sognare alla Schiranna di Varese. So the cowbells are ringing and with good reason because uh, Salome Ulrich of Switzerland 2 is out there and definitely in with a semi-final spot as the leading three boats come down to the finish line to claim their slots in that uh, AB semi-final. First home it is uh, Seberianska of Ukraine 2 followed by Alexandra Furster of Germany 1 so successful in the 
under 23s not so long ago, and Salome Ulrich of Switzerland too, home in third. Those three crews go to the AB semi-final of the women's single skulls. The remaining crews will contest the C final. Well, the next race, uh, the second repechage is well underway in the women's single. Neve, what's the story? Yes, they're already at the 12.50 metre mark. On the way down to you there, Rob. And interestingly, it is the scholar from Paraguay, Nicole Martinez, leading it out here now. Out at these rowers, she was uh, second fastest behind Aurelia Maxima, Katharina Janssen of Switzerland earlier. But she's had a blistering first uh, half of her race here now and there doesn't seem to be too much let up at the moment so it is Paraguay leading it out ahead of Switzerland one and in that all-important third position it's a toss-up between Sweden one and Finland at the moment. Davanti alla nostra postazione è passato il secondo recupero per il singolo femminile con a condurre le danze Nicole Martinez del Paraguay davanti alla all'atleta di eh, della Svizzera, la Svizzera 1 nella fattispecie Caterina Janssen che di fatto questa mattina è rimasta fuori dal passaggio diretto eh, per meno di un secondo quindi forse ha speso un po' di energie eh, a, a mia impressione sembrava stesse controllando la seconda posizione sicuramente valida per il passaggio di turno eh, mentre un po' di vagar dietro tra Finlandia e Svezia e Svezia 1 perché la differenza fra i due, fra i due singoliste è minima e quindi ci sarà una bella bagarre per il terzo posto, quello valido per accedere alla semifinale. Yes, with about 400 meters to go or so, it is still Nicole Martinez of Paraguay leading this out ahead of Aurelia Maxima Katharina Janssen of uh, Switzerland 1. And then at the moment, it is looking like Sweden 1, Anna Malvina Svenjung. Uh, she is sitting in that third position now, but right behind her, it is Mayu Klan Laru of Finland. She's currently in fourth, but very little between them, and her speed is uh, that little bit quicker now so she has about 250 meters to go to get herself into one of those semi-final positions Rob. Yeah I'm wondering if maybe that's going to be too tall an order though she's pulling back some of that distance then all well and good but maybe Kain Larry has been dropped now by Svenning uh, of Sweden in that third place she'll be desperate to hang on to that uh, final S semi-final spot there behind Nicole Martinez of Paraguay out in the lead ahead of Aurelia Maxim Janssen of Switzerland. Una gara splendida, una gara che ancora una volta getta le basi su quello che vuole essere la corsa qui alla Schiranna nel singolo femminile. Ancora al centro della scena cerca di spingere per il possibile rientro la Svezia insieme alla Svizzera. Ancora aperte quelle che sono le tre piazze per l'accesso in semifinale. Uno spettacolo incredibile anche nel singolo femminile. Uh, this is a really big win here coming out of lane four for Martinez of Paraguay. She comes home, a last big pull on the oars and she's through to take this heat. One, two, three and a half lengths ahead of Sweden's uh, Anna-Maria Svinung, followed, I think, by uh, the Swiss athlete Aurelia Maxima Janssen in Swiss 1. Very difficult to tell looking into the sun exactly which way it was. In fact, uh, the Swiss boat coming through in second place, Anna Malvina Svenning of Sweden in third. That's the one, two, three. They're through to the AB semi finals. The remaining crews will contest the repertoire of uh, the final C. Am I up? Oh, a great result there for South America and uh, rather timely, I think, Luca. 
Yeah, yeah. And again, uh, another important time here because Brazil won the Pan American Games uh, after 30 years uh, this year. We've got the team manager from Brazil. Uh, how was winning with Lucas uh, Vertain uh, the Pan American Game after 30 years? Well, we have uh, an incredible guy, an incredible athlete. Is like the top athlete of Brazil and South America, and I mean we're really proud of him, and we think he's gonna go, he's gonna go well today as well, and he's gonna do of course his best, and all Brazil is behind him, all Botafogo people are behind him. Well, that's a, a great result for you. He's already qualified for Paris. What are you expecting from Paris? Of course. Big improvement, he's been training hard, he's been training consistently, he's been training so well and of course the Pan American victory is a great boost for him and I'm sure he's gonna capitalize on that and do his best also in Paris like he did in, in Tokyo. That's great and we can't wait to see him racing shortly after this race, so Rob, over to you. Thank you very much indeed, Luca. Yes, it's the first of four quarterfinals, obviously, in the men's single skulls. Let's cross straight over to Neve and get the latest. They have just passed the 1,000 meter mark here and things are heating up here. This is such a close race. It is a toss up all the way down the course between Ireland 2, Italy 1 and Ukraine. At the moment, it is Mykola Kalashnik of Ukraine leading it out just about ahead of David Mumolo of Italy and Conan Padzaya of Ireland. Partenza molto veloce per il primo quarto di finale del singolo maschile dove troviamo Israele, Norvegia, Irlanda 2, Italia 1, con Davide Mumolo, Ucraina e Monaco. Un po' di cambiamenti tra il primo 500 e il passaggio ai 1000 di fronte alla nostra postazione. In questo momento a condurre Mikola Kalinski per l'Ucraina. Poi subito il nostro azzurro Davide Mumolo che dopo un primo 500 di controllo ha iniziato a cambiare marcia e si è portato nelle prime posizioni quindi dal quinto posto del rilevamento cronometrico dei primi 500 metri passa in seconda posizione ai primi 1000 metri e si fa sotto verso l'avversario ucraino in terza posizione con Pazzaia per l'Irlanda e poi a seguire Monaco, Norvegia e Israele. So at the moment it is still Kalashnik of Ukraine leading it out but earlier on in the heats there was blistering fast finishes from Ireland 2 and Italy 1 so I know this is going to be a big race coming up to that finish line so the top three of these now again will be going into semi-final A and B fourth place will be going to final C fifth to final C or final D depending on times after the last quarter final but uh, uh, not much changing here at all. It is still Ukraine leading it out ahead of Italy 1 in that second position at the moment and it, uh, Ireland 2 just behind. Then a little bit back it is Monaco in that uh, fourth position followed in by Norway and Israel. But it is the top three here now, those top three spots that are the all important ones to get to the semi-final. Still Ukraine from Italy to Ireland. Yes, and uh, sad to see Schittel Borch and Danny Friedman both really dropping off the pace now. They look like they could still just about be in contention, but uh, Quentin Antonielli of Monaco has actually moved up in front of both of them now, uh, up into fourth place, and not that far behind uh, Karan Batzaya of Ireland in third. So uh, Kalashnik of Ukraine ahead of Mumolo of Italy in second, Patsaya of Ireland in third in the semi-final spots. Una di quelle gare che non vuoi perdere nemmeno per un secondo. Davide Mumolo, l'Azzurro, sta cercando di rientrare sull'atleta ucraino ma per la terza posizione cerca di agganciare pericolosamente l'Irlanda. Big supporters from Ireland are here in the grandstand with me, pushing really hard and cheering for the single scala. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of noise. I can hear it from in the tower here. Katzan Patsaya, because he's got to work really hard because he's being pushed all the way here by the man from Monaco, Quentin Antonielli, nearest to the grandstand in lane six. It's almost like a straight line between the front three boats. This is going to be a really tight one to call from the tower. I might have to wait for the Swiss timing to uh, give us the uh, one, two, three on this one. But coming down to the finish line, it looks like it's going to be a win for lane four, three and five in that order. So Italy, 
Ireland, Ukraine look like the qualifiers. A terrific effort there from uh, Antonelli of Monaco, but I don't think he had quite enough left in the tank to get through Patsaya of uh, Ireland. Here it comes then, the uh, final result. It's uh, Kalishnik of Ukraine in first, Mumolo of Italy in second. And that third spot, that all-important third qualification spot for the semi-finals goes to, we're still waiting, I think it's Patsaya of Ireland. Indeed, that's been confirmed. What a finish. Terrific race. Great support from the Irish in the stand. What a finish here! I can see you super happy. Come, come with me, come with me. How was your sir? Oh my God, very stressful, <laughs> but brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I was here sitting next to you and I saw you were supporting all the way yeah, down to the coast. Yeah, you yeah. made the difference. Putin is her son and I'm her, he's my grandson. That's why we're so excited. <laughs> well done, uh, grandmother, grandfather, and then the mom. Were you expecting this qualification spot? Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> We can't wait to see him racing in the semi-final. Thank you very much. Back to the tower. <laughs> well done. Plenty of crack down there from the Irish in the grandstand. Always love to have the Irish around. They now ha know how to have a party, as indeed do the Italians. But the second quarterfinal is approaching the halfway stage. Who have we got here, Neve? So leading it out as he passes our window here now, Oliver Zeidler of Germany. Absolutely no surprise that he is uh, in the lead here now. But an interesting back the field now at the moment. Uh, in second place, it is Andre Struzina of Switzerland. And then it's quite close at the moment. It is Lucas Verten Ferreira of Brazil in that third position, followed closely by Ireland 1 and Egypt. Secondo quarto di finale per il singolo maschile, transit da in testa come potevamo immaginare il campione del mondo in carica Oliver Zeidler per la Germania, seguito a tre secondi a metà percorso da Andy Struzzina per la Svizzera e poi Lucas Ferreira del Brasile, queste sono le prime tre posizioni, quelle che possono cercare di conquistare il passaggio alla semifinale, Irlanda, Egitto e Tunisia, gli altri tre singolisti che cercano di rincorrere terza piazza, sicuramente lì davanti Oliver Zeidler sta facendo, sta facendo l'andatura veramente con un grande controllo e una grande con, completezza di movimento, di potenza, di velocità. So with about 650 meters to go here now, it is still Oli Zeidler of Germany here leading it out. Same as the heat earlier on today, we saw him lead it from the start all the way down the course, finishing in that first position. Here he is doing the same thing. In that second place, it is Andre Struzin after making the jump from lightweight last year. Here he is in the heavyweight men's single skulls in that second position. In the very important third position now, it is still Lucas Zer. Martin Ferreira of Brazil, and then it is Brian Kolsch of Ireland, one in that fourth position, followed in by Egypt and Tunisia. So we have about 500 metres to go here now. Rob has been talking about the fast finishes from Ireland all morning. So let's see if Brian Kolsch can start to bring it up a little bit here now, because he is in that danger zone. He's in that fourth position at the moment. So as it stands, it is Oli Zeidler of Germany in that first place. Andre Struzina putting in a big push here now, still in that second position. Brazil in that third and then back to Ireland one in that fourth position. Yeah, Lucas Vertain Ferreira of Brazil. He will have Brian Kolsch firmly in his eye line and will be aware of that potential to sprint for the line. So the Brazilian still holding on to third behind Struzina of Switzerland in second. Oliver Zeidler of Germany still in the front. Si apre la battaglia, una battaglia straordinaria perché se da un lato c'è un mostro sacro come Oliver Zeidler, dall'altra parte Andri Struzzina, campione del mondo, peso leggero in singolo, potrebbe rientrare vicino al colosso battendo addirittura il brasiliano che dopo 30 anni ha vinto i giochi panamericani. Una gara aperta, una gara che potrebbe regalare il sogno e allora Oliver Zeidler da un lato, Andri Struzzina dall'altro e poi il Brasile per le prime tre piazze, quelle che contano per l'accesso in semifinale. Si apre la bagarre, il gioco si fa duro. Germania e Svizzera insieme al Brasile a rincorrere i sogni di gloria nel singolo maschile.
I think Brian Colch of Ireland in lane two has probably dropped too far back now. I don't think he's got the sprint in him here. As they come down to the finish line, Oliver Zeidler of Germany ahead of Andres Strutzina of Switzerland, Lucas Verhein, uh, Ferreira of Brazil in lane six is going to take third place. That's the one, two, three for the semi-final spots here. In fact, Ferreira, uh, the Brazilian, might have just snatched second place there. A terrific finish for him, but Strutzina of Switzerland will still qualify. I'll just wait for the uh, Swiss timing results to come up, give the official. Yep, Verhein Ferreira of Brazil did just manage to snatch second place ahead of Strutzina of Switzerland in third. Quarterfinal three already at a thousand meters. George Bourne of Great Britain. We know he's got support in the stand. How is he looking at the halfway stage, Neve? Well, he's certainly leading it out all the way down to us here now as he passes 1,100 metres. George Bourne leading it from, at the moment, it is Tim Brees who is in that second position right next to him in lane three. And then in lane five, we have Italy to Gennaro Di Maro in that third position. Per il terzo quarto del singolo maschile troviamo Gran Bretagna, Belgio e Italia che transitano nelle prime tre posizioni ma il nostro Gennaro Di Mauro cerca di mangiare qualche metro al belga Tim Bryce perché c'è il portoghese André Pinto che, che non molla e mantiene il contatto è a meno di una barca dal, dall'italiano dall'azzurro e quindi giustamente Gennaro cerca di rompere gli indugi, recuperare una posizione, portarsi di dosso al battistrada. George Bourne, l'inglese che sta attualmente conducendo questo terzo quarto del singolo maschile. Yes, third quarter final of the men's single skulls. Again, the top three going into the semi-final. A, B, no change in positions at the moment. It is still George Bourne of Great Britain who had a super heat earlier this morning. Then in second, starting to push him now a little bit, Tim Bryce of Belgium. He really is actually coming up here now, um, moving up towards him. Let's see if he can take over from George Bourne in the lead of that. In that very important third position at the moment, it is still Gennaro Di Mauro of Italy too. Then a little bit back it is Andre Pinto of Portugal but let's see if he has a big finish in him too because there's not too much there between third and fourth place. Then back in fifth it is Eskel Borg of Sweden one and then we have Elar Lut of Estonia one in that sixth position. Um, so as they head down about 400 metres to go here now it is such a great race happening here at the moment between George Bourne and Tim Bryce of Belgium. They are side by side here now as they head down. Il Belgio ha attaccato la Gran Bretagna e si porta è una punta a punta che vede forse la prua dell'atleta dell belga appunto guadagnare la prima posizione. In seconda piazza l'atleta inglese che mantiene comunque il contatto, cerca di non far scappare, controlla la terza posizione Gennaro Di Mauro ma non può rilassarsi perché il Portogallo continua a rimanere molto vicino, molto pericoloso, insidioso per la terza posizione che è quella che vale il passaggio di turno alla semifinale. Oh, this is going to be some finish. Tim Bryce of Belgium taking the lead from George uh, born of Great Britain but look at this third spot who is that going to go between Portugal and Italy to nothing between them no, it's a really tight one. Maybe it will be the noise from the grandstand that carries the Italian Gennaro Di Mauro over the finish line but Andre Pinto is making a real push for qualification for the semi-finals here un arrivo ancora una volta incandescente con la Gran Bretagna che se la vede insieme al Belgio poi c'è l'Italia, Gennaro Di Mauro, classe 2001 sta provando a rinvenire e quando è vicino si fa davvero sentire, attenzione nell'ultimo tratto del percorso l'allarme azzurro in chiusura per tentare il rientro
This is the kind of finish we wanted to see here. This is absolutely superb racing coming down to the line. It looks like Tim Bryce of Belgium takes first ahead of either Pinto of Portugal or George Bourne of Great Britain. But I think Di Maro of Italy might have just been pushed out at the end there. I'll wait confirmation for this, but I think first place has gone to Tim Bryce of Belgium. A uh, second place then is either Bourne, I think, or Pinto. George Bourne has got that second spot. This is the one that we're waiting for. The confirmation here. Has it gone to the host nation? No, Andre Pinto of Portugal has succeeded in overhauling Di Mauro. What a finish from him. So it is the Belgium, the Brit and the Portuguese who go through to the semi-finals of the men's single skulls. So the fourth and final quarter final then of these men's single skulls. We've been treated to some terrific competition here, Neve, so far. And I guess this one's going to be as good as any of them. Yes, as we move to the later stages of the competition, as we move throughout the days, we definitely see the competition heating up at the moment. It is Simon van Dorp of Netherlands just about leading it out ahead of Damir Martin of Croatia in second. Uh, but Daniel Gutierrez Garcia of Spain is moved up in into second position, as I just said, that's what is Netherlands from Spain, from Croatia at the moment. Sembra quasi scritto l'esito di questo quarto finale del singolo maschile, ma dobbiamo aspettare comunque il traguardo. In ogni caso, Simon Van Dorp, il vice campione del mondo per l'Olanda, è lì a condurre anche ai mille metri, ma molto molto vicini. Spagna con Daniel Gutierrez e Dami Marti per la Croazia, che hanno preso il largo rispetto agli altri avversari. Quindi i primi tre posti a metà del percorso sono saldamente in mano a Olanda, Spagna e Croazia. The first three will will be going in to semi-final A, B at the moment. It is going back and forth between Simon van Dorp of Netherlands, Daniel Gutierrez Garcia of Spain, but Damir Martin of Croatia putting in the fight here now. Three of these, the battle that's going on between the uh, the top three crews here now is making is pushing them ahead now of the final three crews. We have Finland two over in lane one. We have Paraguay and we have Finland one in lane six near us. Simili colpi la frequenza di Olanda e Spagna che rimangono veramente appaiati a un metro o due di distanza. Dami Martir che invece mantiene un, un ritmo molto più basso, 32 i colpi che in questo momento ci dà, ci dà il nostro portale, quindi un passo di gara completamente differente, quindi mantiene però la velocità degli avversari e riesce a rimanere saldamente nelle prime posizioni per poter accedere alla semifinale. Final 400 meters coming up here now and it is now Damir Martin who's moved himself into the lead just about ahead of Daniel Gutierrez Garcia of Spain. Simon Van Dorp right next to them. There you're one, two, three and they are moving away from um, positions four, five and six here at the moment. Seeing the stroke rates though, Damir Martin down at a cool 32 strokes per minute and then we have Daniel Gutierrez Garcia of Spain. He was up at 38 for a lot of the race. He's dropped slightly to 36 so I'm not sure if he can get himself back up but he is staying right there with them uh, so at the moment it is Croatia from Netherlands every time I say it it keeps changing it is from Croatia from Netherlands to Spain thank you very much Neve. yeah this is really exciting but it's actually become two separate races now hasn't it they've uh, the front three have dropped the back three they're out of contention now so it's all about who can uh, overhaul who here between Croatia Spain and the Netherlands. Ovviamente la Croazia non vuole lasciare nulla di intentato e lo fa benissimo in quest'ultimo tratto del percorso. Entriamo negli ultimi 250 metri. Prova ad agganciare pericolosamente l'Olanda che in chiusura potrebbe lanciare quello che si chiama assalto conclusivo, la marcia trionfale alla Francesco Fossi in chiusura. Attenzione perché all'esterno ancora la Croazia che ci crede, vogliono fare una bella sgasata verso il traguardo. Damn it. 
Damir Martin uh, seems to be just managing to hold off his opponents here, coming up to the closing stages. It's uh, Martin of Croatia in lane three who's going to take first place, ahead of Simon van Dorp of the Netherlands in second. And then a terrific race from uh, Daniel Guterres Garcia of Spain. He takes the third and final semi-final spot here in the men's single skulls. So everybody, that concludes racing for day one of the rowing, sorry, the World Rowing Cup 2024. World Rowing Cup one here in beautiful, sunny, hot Varese. It's absolutely wonderful here. The conditions have made for some terrific racing today, not least in that afternoon session. Thanks to all the athletes for putting on such a great show. Also, thanks to the organising committee and the volunteers show for making uh, this all possible because uh, this lake, as I say, had burst its banks and how, and you can still see the water here is very high around the edges, but we've had a superb day's racing here. Day one of this World Rowing Cup one has set us up beautifully for the weekend ahead. E con questo abbiamo davvero concluso la nostra prima giornata di competizione, una giornata straordinaria che ha permesso alla Coppa del Mondo di Varese di prendere davvero il largo. Se tutto questo è stato possibile, certamente grazie alla macchina organizzativa. Un gruppo straordinario, Varese che fa scuola nel mondo e che ancora una volta ha centrato il bersaglio. Un grazie di cuore ai 380 volontari che con cuore, passione, grinta e sorrisi stanno permettendo di vivere giornate davvero magiche. Domattina ripartiremo insieme a partire dalle 10.00 per un altro grande atto di questa prima tappa della Coppa del Mondo. A tutti voi una buona serata, grazie di cuore per essere stati con noi.